how the sudarium and the shroud match. And here's another picture of an overlay of the two and how it could have been. Uh, yeah, here's, here's. What's the a, name of this cloth? The other one's the shroud. This is the sudarium of Oviedo. Oviedo. Like I said, I don't know as much about this as I do about the shroud to comment on it. I do know, based on even these uh, web searches, how they match what's on the face of the shroud. Okay. <coughs> Sudarium, I do know, is related to, what is, what's the shroud called? I wonder if there's a translation because S-U-D would be like under. No, it, it doesn't have to do with that. It has to do, it's, it's Latin for shroud or okay. image. That's what it, what it is. Um, let me see if there's a sudarium. Well, let's just go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia knows everything. Uh, hmm. Sudarium is a blood clay steamed cloth 33 by 22 kept in Camara Santa of the Cathedral of San Salvador, Oviedo, Spain. Ah, sudarium is Latin for sweat cloth. So it has nothing to do with under. It's no, Latin for that. For wiping the face. For wiping the face. Yes. And then it goes into the background. Like I said, and here's again John 26 through 7, which I just read, how they connect the two ideas with it. Um, like I said, I don't know much about the, the history or the background. I just know what I've just shared with you about it. If you want to dive into it more, I'm sure there are references and websites that will do that for you. But this is again additional evidence. Yes? Um, just curious, do you know if they've compared the DNA characteristics between the blood from the shroud and the Lanciano? Uh, oh, I don't think that they've done, they've gone they've that done extensive that. because they the, can do that, right? They oh, I'm sure that they could nowadays, make, but yeah. at the time of the Lanciano investigation, it was like 1972. Uh, we weren't as sophisticated with our genetic analysis as we are now, like with the shroud blood. Yeah. That was done, ooh, in 94, so that was at least 20 years after that. I imagine if they were able to reanalyze the, the Lanciano blood, we would be able to do a genetic analysis of it yeah. in the same way. Yeah. Okay. Boy, this was way yeah. off the <laughs> beaten track. Yeah. yeah, what happened to the Song of Solomon? Gee. <laughs> it's okay. And I didn't even get to, to our announcements. We have two big announcements. One. There is a new evangelization retreat. Uh, Patty gave me this to share with you. That is this Saturday, uh, December 1st at St. Robert Bellarmine's from 9, on 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Lunch will be provided. And uh, there are these uh, three neat speakers. Uh, I, I can't say I know much about them to really speak about them, but um, I do know that the New Evangelization is an excellent ministry here in the church that I have been trying to connect with David with about how we can do joint ventures with. So if you're interested in a retreat, there is a flyer here. This Saturday, this Saturday. This Saturday, December 1st. And David Burke is going to be the MC. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So, yes. Uh, and if it's you, free. And it's free. So you can't go wrong with the price. And lunch included, boy, that's really a treat. I hope if you do go, you drop a, a generous <laughs> offer. Um, the second announcement, uh, to kind of get us back on track here, uh, this is our calendar for the end of the year. Uh, we are in Resume, a Bible study. We will be meeting next week. Uh, December 11th, if you wanted to know about Christmas, where it came from, where our traditions are, and how they square with the Gospel account, you cannot miss December 11th. I've been doing this message now for several years, and I finally 
got it to a very neat PowerPoint I'm very proud of. So is that a class? Yes. Oh. <coughs> you don't want to miss a very deconstructed <coughs> class where we analyze the gospel account <coughs> of the real first Christmas and compare it to our traditions and find out where our traditions are wrong and where our gospels are right. Okay? And I've been teasing that all the last few weeks. For example, was Jesus born in the winter? Nope. No. 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 Was he born in May? April 17. April 17. <laughs> the birthday of Chip. <laughs> right. <laughs> By us. Chip <laughs> 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 time. Maybe <laughs> negative. I don't know my blood type. I will laugh if it ever, I ever find that out. That's too funny. But yes. One of the things you'll find out is, if you analyze the Gospel accounts, Jesus was not born in the winter. He was most likely born in the spring. Why do we celebrate it in the winter? Ah, you gotta come and see. Gotta come and see. Can't tell you it all now. You gotta come in. If I tell you it all now, then we'll never get to the Song of Solomon. Which we probably won't. But that's another story. Um, and then on the 18th, we're having our Christmas party that we've had. And I have a sign-up sheet okay. for you. Okay. Um, and uh, I will be providing the plates, the napkins, the gifts, and the entertainment. What you can bring are utensils, cups, decorations, drinks, um, soft drinks, iced tea, and punch. Please no hard liquor, beer, or wine. Um, salads, side dishes, appetizers, a main dish, or a dessert. And I have a listing here of who wants to bring what so that people aren't bringing the same thing twice. Okay? Um, if you aren't sure what you can bring or for whatever reason cannot bring anything, don't feel that you cannot come. We always have more than enough food and what's more important is that you come and share our Christmas joy in celebrating the birth of our Lord with our Bible study family. So that's more important. So please come. I'm going to pass this around. I will pass it around next week as well and the week after that. I will also be scanning it and emailing it to people that are not here so that everyone has an opportunity to know what, who's bringing what and why and so forth. Um, so there we are. Um, I almost hate to switch topics, but the shroud is such a, a, a marvelous, marvelous, really, because if it is what it claims to be, then this is the picture, a picture, a photo, if you will, of what our Lord looked like. Yeah. That's remarkable. Because there's not, if you realize there's nothing in our Gospels that tells us what he looked like. We have no idea what he looked like based on the Gospels. The only thing we have is our art. And one of the things that you find out is that our art, the way we have Jesus bearded and all of that, that we see in our art now, is actually based on this. Because if you look in the catacombs, the pictures of Jesus are almost always beardless, and he's a young youth. He doesn't look anything like this. This image of Christ that we have come to recognize came about in around the third century. And from that point on, all of our iconography of Jesus looks like this. All of it. And so we have to wonder, where did they come up with this idea? Where? You also notice, you see how this cheek seems to be darker than this one? It's swollen. Swollen. When you look at the earliest images of Christ, like from the 3rd, 4th, and 5th century, one cheek is always a little higher than the other. All of it. All over the Mediterranean is that way. And so you have to ask yourself, why? Why would they depict Jesus looking like that? When you look at the picture of the shroud, you go, 
there is an art connection to everything on the shroud to our modern images of Christ. All of it. And so you have to wonder, why did they base their image off of this? Why isn't he beardless? Why doesn't he look like the earliest pictures in the catacombs? Because those in the catacombs didn't have this. That has to do with the history of where the shroud most likely came from and where it traveled to. And how the image later, the, the image, the picture that we understand what Jesus looks like has come down to us. We have pictures in the catacombs. Yes. People drew paintings. Of, of Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But they don't look anything like this. How do we know that those pictures were of Jesus? Ah, because there are pictures around them or statements that this is Jesus. Okay. Now, it's interesting. If this shroud is Jesus, one of the things we find out is that Jesus was approximately 5 foot 11. And another interesting thing about it is, if this is Jesus... Not only did he have long hair, you know, shoulder length hair that we had, but he also had a pigtail. The image on the shroud has a pigtail. Long hair. Well, yeah. To get it out of the Yeah, there's a braid in the back that goes down, oh, about so far. Now, where is that in any of your goggles? Where is that in any of your iconography? Who would think to do something like that? Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Well, so. his face, uh, because he's pictured as a young man on the catacombs, I mean, fashions change. He could one day decide to grow a beard, mm -hmm. and another day he <laughs> went around. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It's very interesting to trace the art history of the image of Christ, since we have no, no record of what he actually looks like in any historical records. Why do we picture Jesus looking the way that he does? And one of the interesting things that you find is that it's all based on this image that's on the shroud. And so again, you have to wonder why would they base it off of this if they didn't believe it was the image of Christ? Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. So, uh, one of the things I like about this image also, you can barely see it, but in the photographic negative, these are his eyes. They're closed, but when you analyze this, you see how it's almost circular? You see that? When you do a, a very uh, detailed analysis, these are Roman coins. There are images of coins. Coins. Mm -hmm. When this person died, they buried him in a Greek fashion because it was proper for a Greek burial to put coins on the eyes of the dead. Why? Because the person had to pay Sharon in the afterlife to ferry him across the river Styx. So you always buried someone with coins on the eyes so they had some money to give to Sharon in the afterlife. Very interesting. Which shows a very strong Greek influence in Jesus' death. <laughs> Did you have a question? Um, well, our gospel accounts describe a very quick burial because he died on a Friday around 3 o'clock. They had to get him in the tomb before sunset because that was the Sabbath and they couldn't do any work. That's why they didn't have time to put spices and all the other burial preparations that you normally would put with a dead person. This was a very fast and quick burial. They did not have time to do the elaborate routine that they normally would. 
which supports our gospel account that he was quickly taken down, wrapped, and put into a tomb before sunset. So we're talking, if it was in April, uh, sunset would have been, let's conservatively say, 6 o'clock. So from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, they had to take him off the cross, put him in a cloth, and get him into the tomb and seal it before they were in violation of breaking the Sabbath. So they didn't have much time. And that helps explain all the quickness of all that's on here. So this is the face of Jesus. Yes. Um, it's very fortuitous that we're talking about this because um, we have a friend whose son is listening to some people who say that Jesus was a black man. Oh. Uh huh. And that the Jews are originally black. Uh huh. And how do we know that this is not a fictitious that Jesus? Like, why is Jesus? Right, right. Well, he wasn't white. I can tell you that. Skin. He was. He was a Jew. He was probably olive skin, like most Arabs. Uh, he certainly wasn't black, as we would consider African black, because he was Jewish. He was from the Middle East. He wasn't that. He wasn't. He was. That was not. That's not the case. He's that's Caucasian. And I've heard how people have used to justify that. Is he gone to the book of Revelation, chapter 1? They go to Revelation and the Old Testament and skip everything. Right. In the book of Revelation, it says his hair was white like wool. Yes. Well, again, that's a metaphor or a simile, actually. His hair was white like wool, not as wool. It wasn't the texture of it. It was the color of it. So that's a misreading <coughs> of that text. Misreading all there is to it. Um, Jesus was of Semitic origin, that's clear, and he would have been like a semi, uh, like a modern Jew today or an Arab. He would have had that kind of skin tone and color. End of story. Yeah. <laughs>